Hey, what is up, everybody? I know I look like complete crap right now. Um, reason being is because the floor is being washed, so I can't really go in there right now. Um, that's what, and my room's where the kitchen is, of course, because the kitchen floor is the one that's being washed. So, my glasses are in there, and if I wanted to take a shower, I couldn't, because I have to get my clothes, and they're in there. So, I'm pretty much stuck the way I am right now. <clears throat> And, um, but yeah, I am, uh, gonna give you your TNA Impact Wrestling Review. Um, this was the first TNA to come out on Friday. I didn't, and I'm giving the review on Saturday. Main reason why is because my mom was watching a movie yesterday and I set two recordings at once. And if you have Comcast, you can't record two things at once and watch something at the same time. I don't know why, it's just, you can't. Um... And I was recording the show called 12 Monkeys and Impact Wrestling at the same time. So, um, yeah. Um, so, pretty much, uh, it's just not going to work out, I guess. Uh, she would just stop the recording, so then I had to record it again. And I was going to say, okay, I'll give the video when it comes back on. But it didn't come back on until like 3 in the morning, and I fell asleep before it came, came on. So, I'm giving the review now. So, the first... Th uh, this TNA took place yesterday, January 16th, 2015. We have Josh Matthews and Taz on commentary. And they're going to like do like a little bit of backstage stuff, I guess, that's showing you what the production is going to be like for this show. I don't really know why they need to show this, but they're going to. So, um, yeah. Um, then uh, MVP, Samoa Joe, Loki, and Kenny Kin come out. And, um... They, uh, MVP talks about, um, since he became a professional wrestler, he always knew he needed to, that the stack would always be get stacked against him, so he needed a family to fall back on, um, and he found his family, uh, being the scoop, and we find out this scoop's called the Beatdown Clan, the BDC, uh, and they say that they're gonna in take out everybody, and then they go, to, and... Before, he was going to bring out the new World Heavyweight Champion, Lashley, but then he's going to bring out Eric Young, who we find out it has nothing to do with this group at all. Be, at all. But he liked what he did last last week by costing Bobby Roode the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Um, so Eric Young comes out. He's kind of shaved a little bit. He shaved his head a little bit, so now he kind of looks like Magnus in a way. But I'm, I'm not wearing my glasses, so it's a little bit hard for me to tell. So, uh, yeah, but MB, Eric Young comes out, and, um, he says, um, that he, a month ago, me and MVP couldn't even be in the same way, but now I don't mind him. Um, he said that when you help Lashley win the T beat me for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, you would just help one of your family members, and I used to do anything for one of my family, for someone that was like a family to me named Bobby Wood. I always helped him out. He got one of the first shots at my TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Um, and he's like, where was my shot at the TNA World Heavyweight Championship? Now, now I, you didn't give me my shot. Now, this makes no sense in a way, just due to the fact that I think Bobby Wood was only at, like, a couple shows during his title one because uh, he missed the show, I remember. Um, and then, um, the, the rest of TNA, like, from TNA, from, like, Thanksgiving all the way to the end of 2014, we're all just recaps and repeats, so I really don't understand what he was trying to say by this, because, really, Bobby, when did Bobby Wood even have a chance to give him a shot? You know, I bet if he even, uh, I remember MVP even stepped in and said, I want my shot, so even if he wanted to, MVP already took his shot, and, uh, you weren't even at one of the show that he was at afterwards, so I don't really get that. Uh, anyhow, um, so then um, Eric Young says, um, tonight, um, so he said, last week I took the TNA World Heavyweight Championship from you. And he also talked about how when he was in the hospital, because from when he got taken out by Lashley, I assume, where was you didn't even pay me a visit. You just sent me a text message, and then someone gives me a tech gave me a text message that told me the truth. I think we found an MVP. 
Um, and um, then he says that tonight he's going to... Uh, last week he took the title from him. Tonight he's going to take everything from Bobby Roode because tonight they're having a no, no disqualification match. Uh, no DQ match. Uh, so then MVP goes to put out the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Lashley. Um, he, they play his music. He never comes out. And then eventually Kurt Angle comes out and says uh, that you guys don't look like... Uh, you guys just look like a bunch of thugs, and you made a mistake by letting me let me um, walk. And they're like, we did, that was just like a warm up, I think he pretty much said. Um, and then Kurt Angle says, I know I can't make any matches anymore because I'm not the executive wrestling of operations, but I can um, make you all tap out. And then Samoa Joe gets in Kurt Angle's face, and Kurt Angle punches him in the face, and uh, and the BDC. Um, try to come out and attack him, but security breaks it up, and Kurt Angle challenges Samoa Joe to a match right now, which he accepts. Um, and that was about it. I thought this was fine, though. Um, I just only, the only question I have is, uh, who the hell is the TNA, like, general manager? What it, who makes the matches? So, I guess the superstars make the matches, I guess. Uh, maybe we'll get a GM suit, I'm not sure, but we'll see, but... Um, I, I'll give you more of my thoughts when I, uh, come back. Uh, I'm just gonna watch a little, because I'm gonna do, like, a live review, watch a little bit. And when it goes to commercial, when my match is over, I'll come back and make the video, so I'll be back. Alright, so the next match is, uh, oh, well, Kurt Angle versus, uh, Samoa Joe. I forgot about that. During the match, someone was trying to go find, Bo um, well, Lashley. <laughs> And, um, they couldn't find him, I guess. Um, so then, um, we get the match. Pretty good match. It, it had already started before the break, and Samoa Joe was working on the knee of, uh, Kurt Angle. Um, Kurt Angle got some offense, apparently, at the beginning, and then Samoa Joe took control with a clothesline. Then, um, Angle hits three German suplexes on him. Samoa Joe... Um, it's an integral in the corner. Kurt Angle, he goes for the choke. Kurt Angle counters into the ankle lock. Um, Kurt Angle hits the ankle slam. Samoa Joe kicks out. He, I think Samoa Joe hit, went for the muscle buster, and Kurt Angle got him in the ankle lock. And he, like, stretch it out. And then, uh, Samoa Joe was trying to, like, grab the ref so he could hurt him. And then he reversed the ankle lock, and the ref takes a... Kurt Angle bumps into the ref, so he gets taken down. And then Samoa Joe low blows uh, Kurt Angle. And then he gets him in the rear naked choke. And Kurt Angle taps out. Samoa Joe gets the win, which I was shocked he tapped. I was expecting him to at least pass out for him or something. And then the BDC clan and Eric Young. I guess Eric Young is not in on it, but he respects. He said he's, he respects what he's doing. So I think uh, that he's going to be in on That he'll eventually join this group or something. I don't know. But uh, they beat down Kurt Angle, and then Bobby Roode runs out with a chair, and then all of them run off. Um, I always wonder, I know this is kind of like nerdy wrestling knowledge, why they don't just... Because, I mean, I understand someone's going to get taken down, but why don't they just beat his ass? <laughs> you know? Um, like, Angle can just hit, like, the guy that just... Joe with the chair. But then they could all just beat his ass, right? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, he, they went off, and that was about it. Uh, match was okay. It's not really... I, I mean, it's not the easiest to see without glasses, but the match, from what I could see, was okay. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, I don't even know what's going to happen next, but we'll see. Alright, so, uh... I had to, uh, go help my grandfather do some things. That's why it took me a little bit of time to get this up. I mean, you probably don't even care because it won't even feel that way. But uh, I'm not gonna be. I'm gonna be outside helping my grandfather do stuff. And then I'm probably gonna take a shower, eat dinner. I don't know how long we're gonna be out there. Um, but um, I I did see some of the rest of TNA. Um, and uh, I want to cover it now. And then when I see the rest of it, I'll cover it then. So. Bobby Roode's in the win, and he said he's been trying to hold back his anger all night, but after hearing all the BS that Eric Young's been saying, you know, about him, he thinks it's crap that he threw you a 10-year 
friendship due to a TNA World Heavyweight Championship, and he said that he took away that TNA World Heavyweight Championship because that's his life, and that that's the, the reason why he steps inside TNA. And then he says uh, that tonight's not about wrestling, tonight's about me kicking your ass. Um, and then uh, Rockstar Spud goes up to talk to Jeremy Borass backstage, and uh, pretty much um, he said um, that um, well, Ethan Carter the Third has gone crazy since he shaved you know Jeremy Borash's head, and Jeremy Borash says that he's gonna get what's coming to him. Um, and Rockstar's, and I thought this was fine stuff. So then the Revolution, which is the tag team champions. Storm, James Storm, and Abyss, uh, the Great Sonata, Sonata, yeah, the Great Sonata, Manic, and they have a new guy, I forget his name, um, but, um, they're up on the balcony, then they're gonna watch the match between, um, Matt and Jeff, the Hardys, the Hardy Boys, and the Wolves, cause they're having a match, and whoever wins that match would become the number one contenders to James Storm and Abyss's tag team titles, um, um, the new guy, I think, was the guy that Manic was talking to, like, when he just debuted, I forget his name, um, and then James Storm, I first didn't want him, and I guess he wants him now, I don't know, but, um, yeah, I thought this was some pretty okay stuff, um, I liked it, so that's pretty much it, um, when I watch, when I, when I can watch the rest of the show, I will, um, as for my prediction right now, though, who's gonna become number one contenders, I could see maybe, like, a triple threat situation happening, um, no, I don't really see a winner. I don't really know who could win. I actually want to see this match, though, because I never saw him square off, because I know they square off before, um, but I wasn't watching TNA at the time, so I'm glad I get to see him square off now. But, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll be back uh, when the match is over, when I can watch it. All right, so when, now we have uh, the tag team match. I am on break right now, that's why I'm giving you this part of the video, and then I, right immediately after I uh, upload this part, I have to go back out and work for a little bit, and then I can probably just finish the show. So, um, we have Matt and Jeff the Hardys versus The Wolves, Eddie Edwards, and Davey Richards, and on the, uh, balcony, I, I mentioned this, but on the balcony, The Revolution are watching, James Storm, Abyss, The Great Sonata, and I found out who that other member is. I think his name is Koya. Um, but I think it's the same guy that Manic was talking to a few weeks ago. Um, so the match was great. Uh, the Hardys are just dominating the Wolves in the beginning of it. Um, you know, they're really taking control. Uh, they do like a double splash to them. They do a, like a... I think Matt Hardy did a clothesline. Jeff Hardy did the chop block. I like that spot. Just a simple tag team move. Um, and then eventually, uh, Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy, I think are gonna, like, double suplex, uh, the, um, I think it's Eddie Edwards that was gonna do it, and then Davey Richards f figures him out, and they both hit, like, a one, and then Jeff Hardy, uh, Matt Hardy gets Hoey Kumana, and Jeff Hardy gets drop kicked off the, uh, outside the win, and, um, eventually the Wolves are just dominating the Hardys now, um, they pretty much take control. And then Jeff Hardy gets the hot tag. Uh, um, no, they, they were dominating Matt Hardy. Then Jeff Hardy gets the hot tag. He dives on everybody. He does a double uh, whisper in the wind on both Wolves. And then he goes to dive on and they move out of the way. Then the Wolves try to dive on Jeff, but he moves out of the way. And then Matt Hardy tries to come in. They try to back body drop him on the apron, but then he, he sprints both himself off, off and hits a double DDT. And then Jeff Hardy runs the ropes. This was awesome. And dives on the wolves. I thought that was a great spot. And then um, Jeff Hardy gets him back in the win. Hits a splash. Tries to cover him. Um, I think it was, he hit it on uh, Eddie Edwards. And he kicks out. And then Davey Richards comes in. And they hit like a super kick to Jeff Hardy. While Eddie Edwards is holding him up for a suplex. Um, they try to do a double pop. They try to do... Um, and then they hit like a, and then they hit a suplex and a stomp that Jeff Hardy kicked out of it. Um, and then um, um, the Wolves try Eddie Edwards tried to do a power bomb to Jeff Hardy, but he tags in Matt Hardy without him seeing it. And then he hits a twist of fate, and he goes. Jeff Hardy's gonna go for the Swan Tom, but Eddie Edwards sees him coming, so he knocks him off. Um, no, he shoves Matt Hardy into him. And, um, Matt Hardy eventually takes out Davey, 
Eddie Edwards. He had the side effect on Eddie Edwards. And then um, Jeff Hardy goes for the swan time. Eddie Edwards gets the knees up. Um, Davey Richards. Um, they both hit. They both. I think they hit like a the finisher on uh, Matt Hardy. And then Jeff Ho- and they try to cover him, but Jeff Hardy hits the swan time bar to break it up. And then eventually uh, Matt, Jeff Hardy does a back suplex over the ropes to Davey Richards. And then Matt Hardy, and then he hits a twist of fate stunner on uh, Eddie Edwards. And then Matt Hardy picks him up in like a power slam, and Jeff Hardy hits like a twist of fate on him. Covers him and gets the win, and the Hardys become number one contenders to James Storm and Abyss' t- world tag team titles. I thought this was great stuff. Um, great match, and I can't wait to see the match between the Hardys and uh, Storm and Abyss for the tag team titles. That should be good. Um, and then Blam's backstage getting interviewed, and... Um, he talk, he's talking about the Feast of Fire, because um, next week they're going to have that. And if you don't want, know what that is, that's uh, it's pretty much like a Money in the Bank ladder match for WWE. Instead of just getting an op- um, instead of getting the briefcase, though, for a world title shot, you get it for all the titles. You get it for the X Division. You get it for the uh, tag team titles. And you can get it for uh, the women's. No, you can't. Actually, I think that's it, because uh, they don't have any other titles. Um so, uh, Blam says he's gonna feast, but he won't get fired. And him and Magnus are gonna work together, and, uh, they'll get all the briefcases. And, uh, yeah, I thought that was good stuff. And then backstage, MVP and Kenny King. Kenny King's wondering why Bobby Lashley, uh, backstage. And then Kenny King's wondering why Lashley didn't come out because, uh, and ask if they're all cool. He's like, no, we're cool. And he says that, uh, we, you, we control the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. We control the gold. And, um... Eric Allen says, I'll tell you what's not gold. Bobby Roode, I said, I took his belt and his gold, and now I'm going to take everything from him in the NoDQ match and prove, prove myself to you guys. And then uh, they say everything's all right, good. And then they talk about how he didn't get much love or something because of the way he's angry. I thought that was funny. But, yeah, this TNA uh, has been pretty solid so far. So let's uh, when I come back from doing work, let's, I'll see what happens next. All right, so now I've cleaned myself up. I got my glasses back. I took a shower. I look way better than I did in the first part of the video. Look, it was kind of uh, bad. Um, and now I'm back on my computer because I didn't feel like uh, just putting my computer on. I just kind of felt like using the phone. I don't know why. I was just kind of feeling in that mood. But now um, we get uh, Ethan Carter the third and Tyrus go to like the camera trucks. To control the cameras, they get in control, and they go with a. And uh, one of the camera guys is like, "Don't press this button." I don't know why they gave them control, because they um have the cameras go to uh, Jeremy Borash, and uh, he mentions, "Hey, you said you're gonna get what's coming to me earlier in the night. Um, I'm challenging you to a match next week," and he says that he has 30 minutes to decide. He has 30 minutes to accept, and then he presses the button that he wasn't supposed to press, which I think told the people to follow Dixie Carter on Twitter because that popped up after um, he pressed it. So, yeah. So then we get uh, Eric Young versus Bobby Roode in a notice qualification match. I thought this was a pretty solid match. Um, I think they could have used the stip a little bit more, but whatever. Bobby Roode and Eric Young just pretty much beat the crap out of each other, brawl in the crowd um, during the match. I hate that they keep doing this. I know they have to show that there is cameras everywhere, but how, like, how do you, I don't know. Um, but, uh, someone's trying to interview Lashley, and I guess he's not having it, because Lashley did show up doing, doing the show, and, um, then what happens, um, so then Eric Young, uh, at one point, Eric Young stopped Bobby Wood's head while I was on the floor, I thought that was kind of cool, and Eric Young tries to power drive, and Wood onto a chair, Wood counters, uh, hits a spine buster, uh, tries to Wood bomb him up, Eric Young on the chair, Eric Young thuns him in the eyes, Throws him into the chair that's wedged. And then Eric Young hits a power driver on the chair for the win, which I was surprised about. I actually didn't expect him to get the win clean. I was expecting some outside interference or something. But no, he uh, won with the uh, power driver. I thought that was uh, kind of cool. And then afterwards, MVP Ken- and Kenny Ken come out. And uh, they say uh, that um, it's a celebration time because the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, the Destroyer Lashley's here. And Bobby Roode's going to the hospital, and he said, uh, maybe someone will visit him, but I doubt it, because you didn't visit Eric Young while he was in the hospital. 
And I keep forgetting to mention that Eric Young and the BDC group have new music now. I keep forgetting to mention that. I think it's okay. Um, and then Austin Aries is backstage. And he, he's supposed to tonight defend the X Division Championship against Loki. And he said things have changed since last week because now he's in the group and uh, he has to fight uh, these battles. And he says um, that if you get back me into a corner, I get dangerous. Um, so I think that was good stuff. And I, I guess can't wait to see the match because I think uh, it should be a good match. And that's all. all and uh, I thought this part was a pretty good stuff. Alright, so now we have, um, well, you see three, Ethan Carter the third and Tyrus are looking for Jeremy Boras backstage. Um, then, Book gets interviewed and talks about how, uh, how she carried Robbie E in that amazing red com com competition. Say that he never touched the animals and he was pretty much being a wimp about it. So then we get a match, it's, uh, Book and Velvet Sky. No, Book and Taryn Terrell, the Knockouts champion. Apparently, they have a new Knockouts title belt now. I forgot what it looked like before. Uh, I didn't really get the, actually. I didn't even get really a good look at what the new belt looked like, so I couldn't tell you. Um, and they had a match with the beautiful people, Velvet Sky and Tam Angelina Love. I don't know. No, I don't know why I'm struggling, kind of, because I to remember these names. And they were inside with the bull man, and the bull mans were inside with them. Uh, the bull mans is DJ Z, um, Jesse Garters, and Robbie E. They kind of had a pretty good entrance. Um, kind of looked like Robbie E. was kind of jerking off a little bit, but whatever. Um, I thought it was funny though. I think it was what it was supposed to look like. And then they take a selfie, and I don't know if you've seen these yet, but they have these selfie sticks. Apparently Taz hasn't seen him yet. And Zima Iron has a selfie stick and they take a selfie with him. Uh, I've seen him before. Someone had him one time when I was, uh, when we were having like a little bit of a cousin's get together. It looks kind of weird that you would take a selfie with that. You would think that they would have like a small selfie stick, but no, they have this. Uh, I don't know why, but they do. It's like this big long stick, so I don't know, it's weird. But they take a selfie, and Robbie E. was doing the peace sign, and he kind of messed up the picture a little bit. Um, Brooke goes after Robbie E. Uh, Taryn Terrell dives on the beautiful people and DJ Z. And then, um, eventually, Robbie E. distracts Brooke, and Velvet Sky rolls her up, and gets, holds her tights, gets the win, and Taryn Terrell could have broken up the count, but she didn't, because she's an awful tag team partner. And then afterwards, um, they take another selfie, and then the lights go out. When they come back on, Awesome Con's in the ring. And I guess the bromance ditched and left their girls to get hurt. Uh, I don't know why. I don't even know why they didn't run away, but they get laid out pretty much by uh, Awesome Con. Awesome Con hits like a finisher on Velvet Sk No, Angelina Love. And then a Havoc comes out. They have another face-off, and security breaks it up. Um... I actually liked all of this. I found the match funny. And Awesome Con even laid out DJZ. She choke slammed him. Um, so I thought this was actually putting funny stuff. And it was awesome. And then EC3 finds Jeremy Borash. And at first, Jeremy Borash didn't want to fight him. He says, I'm not a wrestler. But then he goads him into it, because, telling him that nobody respects him. Uh, because, you know, so no one saves him because nobody respects you. Um, and he said, why should they? And then he's like, you want to fight? I'll fight you. And then EC3 says, see you next week. So he pretty much goaded him in the, into the match. And that was pretty much it. I thought this was all... Um, I thought this was entertaining stuff, and I thought it was good stuff. So I, I thought this was good for what it was. All right, so the camera crew backstage, and Manic comes over and sends them over to James Storm. And James Storm leaves, has Manic leave him alone to Koya. Um, uh, that's the new member of the revolution. We find this is the guy that Manic was talking to to try to get to join the, the group. Uh, we find out Koya means um, lost, and that's what he was before uh, he joined uh, James Storm, and now he's found himself. And he said next week Koya will be uh, unleashed. So I don't know if he's going to compete in the Feast of Fire briefcase match, or if he's just going to have like some sort of squash match and win. I'm not really sure about that. So then. Um, 
We get Austin Aries defending the X Division Championship against Loki. Uh, Kenny Ken MVP and Samoa Joe were inside. And this was a decent match. Austin Aries didn't, was going to dive out on the floor, but he didn't want to do that. Because Loki, uh, because of the other members of uh, the BDC were out there. So um, he just didn't do it. One point Austin Aries was like backdropped Loki over the top ropes. And I think he was actually supposed to go over him. But he actually landed, his balls landed on him. So I thought that was awesome. Then Austin Aries goes to die, but he stops himself. And then eventually Loki takes advantage. He goes for the brain buster. Loki blocks it and suplexes him. Uh, ribs first into the ropes. Dominates him. He Loki for a little bit. They have like a chop war. Um, and Austin Aries' chest was red after this. And then Austin Aries makes a comeback. Drop kicks him in the ropes. Then eventually he gets uh, Loki in the last chancery. And um, which is his submission move. And MVP and uh, Samoa Joe get on the apron and distract the ref. And Loki taps behind the referee's back. But the um, ref doesn't see it. And uh, so he, so the match continues. And Aries knocks uh, Joe and MVP off the apron. Then he knocks. Then he takes out Kenny Ken. He dives on um, Joe and MVP. He goes to go off the top rope. But behind the referee's back, Kenny Ken chops... Um, uh, Aries off the turnbuckle and then Loki hits the key driver I think that's what it's called he hits his finisher on him though and um, covers him gets the win and becomes the new X Division champion I thought this was fine um, I think they, Loki kind of needed to win this be, to give the group like another title in the, um, you, know, uh, uh, you know another title to the name so then it, afterwards it showed Lashley backstage and it looks like he's about to come to the win, so I'm not really sure what's going to happen. I can't wait, I guess, to see what happens. So, uh, yeah, I thought this was good stuff. All right, so now, this is the last thing on the show. Um, MVP is coming, is pretty much talking trash on the BDC as a force to be reckoned with. And they talk about um, how there's a leader named, La like, how there's the dominant cha world champion, Lashley. So they bring him out, and they say... Uh, that the, the TNA world titles, the BDCs, it's property of the BDCs. We're letting you hold it, pretty much. Um, talks about how, uh, you know, the friendship. And uh, Lashley says, this is not your title, this is my title. Um, and, uh, you know, um, MVP says, uh, hey, you know, uh, we made you champion. Because um, right now, you could be... Dancing and jiving somewhere else. We prefer into the WWE. I kind of like how they kind of took that shot there. And, um... Lashley tells him to get his hands off him. And MVP says... Look. When we were in that other company we were in the WWE... Uh, we, went, we trained together. We did everything together. You taught me things. So I'm going to let this slide. We'll go our separate path. Let's, but let's not go... You know, uh, like this. Let's go, let's go on good terms. So then he hugs him. And then he kisses Lashley, which I thought was weird. But that was like a cue for the BDC and Eric Young to just jump him. So they attack him, beat the crap out of him. Uh, MVP says, this is your tit title. You're right, the title, huh? Let us let me give it to you. So then he hits Lashley off the skull with the belt. They continue to attack him. Um, and then MVP hits a drive-by kick and says, this, this title isn't yours. This is the property of the B BDC. And afterwards, Lashley was bleeded. And I thought this was great stuff. Uh, really sets up for next week. Can't wait to see what happens with this next week. I kind of figured this would happen because they gave it away because Lashley came out high-fiving fans, which I thought was a bad move. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so that kind of made it predictable because he high-fived the fans when he came out. But, uh, yeah, that was the first TNA on Friday. I thought this was a great episode. I'm not going to lie. I thought this was great. I liked the uh, Eric Young bobby Roode match. They really put him over, you know, made him a new... He just turned here. You gotta make it. You gotta make him look uh, impressive. I like the way that they had the BDC win all night. They made him look really strong. Uh, the Samoa Joe Kurt Angle match was a, not a bad match. Um, low key versus Austin Aries for the title was not bad. Um, the deep knockouts match was entertaining, funny, and it was nice to see Awesome Con and Havoc have that face off. So I thought everything was pretty good. It makes me want to watch next week. Um, so I can't wait to see what happens next week. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. If you want to subscribe to me, click in that corner right here. And that's pretty much it, guys. See you later.